Hey, what's up? In this video, we're going to find dy dx, that's the slope, and the second derivative of y with respect to x, that's the concavity, given these parametric equations at the value of theta equals pi. That's the value of our parameter. So, solution. So, dy dx, the formula is dy d theta, so the rate of change of y with respect to theta, over dx d theta. And that makes sense, right? Because dy dx is a derivative, so it's a rate of change. So it's the change in y over the change in x. So dy d theta is going to be the derivative of y with respect to theta. So the derivative, in this case, of 1 is 0. And the derivative of sine is cosine. So this will be negative cosine theta. And then on the bottom, we have dx d theta. So the derivative of x is, uh, is going to be 1. That's the derivative of theta. And then the derivative of cosine is negative sine. But there's already a negative here, so it'll be plus, plus sine theta. Let's check that. So we took dy d theta. So that's going to be 0, and that's going to be cosine. Yep, so you get negative cosine. Checks. Uh, we computed dx d theta. That's going to be 1. And then the derivative of cosine is negative sine. Negative and negative is positive. So yeah, we got 1 plus sine theta. OK, good. We want dy dx at the moment when theta is equal to pi. So what we do is we plug in pi for all of the thetas now. So this is going to be negative cosine of pi over, and then it's going to be 1 plus the sine of pi. If you forget what uh, these values are, you can always just think about the unit circle, right? So on the unit circle, every ordered pair can be thought of as cosine theta, comma, sine theta. And so pi is here. And so the ordered pair that corresponds to pi would be negative 1 comma 0. So in this case, the cosine of pi, well, in all cases, the cosine of pi is negative 1 because it's the x-coordinate. So it's negative, negative 1. And then the sine of pi is 0 because the y-coordinate is 0. So it would be 1 plus 0. So negative and negative is positive, so we get 1 over 1. So we just get 1. So in this case, this would be the slope, right? So this is the slope. Slope. The slope is equal to 1. So the slope of these parametric equations is equal to 1 when theta is equal to pi. So to recap, dy dx at the moment when theta is equal to pi is equal to 1. So the positive slope. This is, again, the slope. OK, now we have to find the second derivative. This is a little bit trickier. I'm not sure how hard it's going to be. Uh, I haven't really thought about it. Let's try it. <laughs> So the second derivative of y with respect to x, okay, this is going to be d d theta of dy dx, okay, over dx d theta. So how do I have that memorized? Um, so it's just like the other formula, really. If you look at this other formula here, the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to the derivative of y with respect to theta over dx d theta. So here, the second derivative of y with respect to x, we're really taking the derivative with respect to x of dy dx. That's what the second derivative is. So the derivative of dy dx is the derivative of dy dx with respect to theta over dx d theta. So this here, this here is like your y. Let me use a different color so you can see it. So here's y, here's y. Here's y, here's y. Same thing. It's the same formula, right? You're just doing it again. Um, so d d theta of dy dx. That's going to be some work because this is dy dx, okay? dx d theta is easy. dx d theta, we already have it. It's 1 plus sine theta, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and fill that in down here. This will be 1 plus sine theta. And now we'll go to the side and we'll work out d d theta of dy dx. I think we're going to have to use the quotient rule, so let's do it. So d d theta of dy dx. This is dy dx. So it's negative cosine theta over 1 plus sine theta. 
So recall the quotient rule. I'm going to refresh your memory because mine, the way I do it is possibly a little bit different. So if you have f over g and you take the derivative, I think of f as the top or first piece and g as the bottom or the second. So it's the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom one squared. So here we take the derivative of cosine and so we get negative sine, right? Um, but we already have a negative so it's sine. That's the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top. So minus the top, um, it's already ha it already has a negative, so minus and minus is plus times the derivative of the bottom, so that'll be just cosine theta, right? Because the derivative of 1 is 0 and the derivative of sine is cosine. I'll go over it again in a minute. Let's just finish it over the bottom 1 squared, 1 plus sine theta squared. Let's check that. So we took the derivative of the top piece. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine, but negative and negative is positive, so it checks. Times the bottom, so it checks. Minus the top, but the top has a negative, right? So negative and negative is positive, so it checks. Good stuff. Times the derivative of the bottom. The derivative of 1 is 0. The derivative of sine is cosine. Good, good, good stuff. Oh, look at this. Let's distribute. Something is going to happen. I noticed something. This is sine theta. Then sine times sine is sine squared theta. Then we have cosine squared theta. This is the best identity in the history of the world. <laughs> I always say, like, you could take trigonometry, like, you know, like in a class in college, and you can fail it, and you'll still know this identity. This is equal to 1, right? That's equal to 1. Sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. This is equal to sine theta plus 1. Oh, wow. Wow. Totally rigged. 1 plus sine theta squared. That's really, that's really lucky. That's really lucky. Now these cancel, right? So this is going to be 1 over 1 plus sine theta. Completely rigged. And actually, this problem, I copied it down from a book, and I copied it down wrong. <laughs> so uh, that's really coincidental that that happened. So up here, we have 1 over 1 plus sine theta. That's great. So basically, uh, when you have this, and you're dividing by this, you're multiplying by the reciprocals. It's 1 over 1 plus sine theta times the reciprocal of the bottom piece, so 1 over 1 plus sine theta. Very cool stuff. This is equal to 1 over 1 plus sine theta quantity squared. Excellent, excellent. All right, so now all we have to do is plug in theta equals pi. Okay, so finally, to make it seem long and dramatic, finally, uh, we're, we're computing the concavity, right? The second derivative of y with respect to x, and we want that at the moment when theta is equal to pi. So it's going to be 1 over parentheses 1 plus sine of pi. And this, this whole thing here is squared. And we know what the sine of pi is uh, 0, right? So this is 1 over 1 plus 0 squared. Wow, so we just get 1. So the concavity is 1. So it's concave up. So it's concave up at uh, theta equals pi. So all you have to do in these problems is just carefully use the formulas. Um, that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope this video has helped uh, someone out there on the internet. <laughs> that's it.